Cheers. Steve. And Slate. Stallone, scene one, take one. Marker. Stallone. Right. And <laughs> action. You know what I'm curious about uh, after seeing the film Rocky is was there a Rocky in your life? Is there a Rocky or was that somebody that just came out of story writing? No, it's, it's a fictional character, but I think uh, most people have a Rocky in them, and that is a man who uh, is dying to get out, dying to do whatever he wants to. Like, for example, if one man wants to be an artist, just for the ability to have the chance to be an artist, a man wants to be an athlete, he'd just like to carry that ball one time. So that's what I mean when there's a Rocky in each of us, but it's a fictional character. It's more of a state of a mind, state of mind than an actual, uh, based on an actual character. The format, of course, is uh, very strongly uh, designed around Rocky Marciano. The man dreams of being Rocky Marciano. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the equipment to be a great uh, legendary fighter such as Marciano was. You had, in the credits, it said that the boxing choreography was right. done by you. Right. So did you, have, you had a background in boxing? No, it no? was no. It was just a matter of studying, yeah. studying the, uh, the styles. I went all the way back to uh, Stanley Ketchel fighting Jack Johnson uh, at the turn of the century. And what I wanted to do was take the best moments from fighting for the past 70 years and condense them into 9 or 10 minutes. And that way we could, I, I, could, I, I had a sure fire fight sequence, you know, at least <laughs> all those men that had paid the price for many, many years, I condensed it, and I, so I knew that was the formula. Then I had to choreograph it so uh, there was a rhythm there. It just wasn't random slaughter, if, as it were. It, it was a kind of a ballet, a movement, and, and it finally built to a crescendo. It wasn't just haphazard punching. It, I, I noticed that, uh, it, well, the movie opens with a fight, right? and, uh, and you're obviously uh, less not less equipped physically but less equipped as a talented fighter right in that particular opening than you are you know you're dynamite when you when you get in the ring for the for the final fight of the championship fight now when uh, in fact I want to mention that uh, the movies of great local interest here because Talia Shire is uh, Francis Ford Coppola's sister right. that's at San Francisco Carl Weathers played with the Oakland Raiders right and uh, I feel I feel he's a running back no he was a linebacker Line, linebacker mm -hmm. and uh, so a, a lot of keen interest around here from those people. And uh, when you got in the ring with Carl Weathers, uh, you, how'd you guys do? Did you hurt each other? Or was there? Well, there was. I mean, Carl is, as you well, when the people see the film, he's a rather large, <laughs> rambunctious human being, and uh, he had to learn how to throw a punch. He didn't know how to pull a punch, uh -huh. and it takes uh, a lot of talent to learn how to pull a punch because it's twice as hard. Because you, as you go out, you have to uh -huh. be able to stop your punch. So it's like, ah! Whereas a normal boxer, of course, wouldn't do that. He would just let it go. So now, are you pulling those on the body? Uh, I am touching the skin. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm pulling them as soon as I make contact with his flesh. Because uh, uh, several times in the fight, we did get a little carried away when we heard the, the, uh, the fight crowd. And Carl would come out, and he actually thought he was a champion. He would tap me a few times in the forehead. And those gloves were special gloves. They were sent from Mexico. They're illegal in this country. They're called Casanova. So they're, they're very, very hard gloves. It's like uh -huh. being hit with a cinder block. <laughs> so when he hits me a few times, I say, Carl, please, you understand? <laughs> I wrote you. I wrote you into this movie. You are my <laughs> imagination. You understand? You are a character from my mind. I'm getting beaten by my own dreams. I don't understand this. So he did it again. So uh, on the ropes, if in the second round, when I start coming back on him, that was an actual uh, altercation. When when they separate us and we're yelling, he's going get that gorilla back to his corner and all that. That that we got a little carried away, but. That's bound to happen. Out of the actual damage, I think Carl broke his thumb, I broke my ribs, I had a crack stirring, and then Carl had water on both knees and, and uh, lacerations. Just a simple little movie. Yeah, right, and his really spine, nice. and a U-turn in his back, yeah. and things like that, and I have permanent whiplash. But I'll tell you, <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> maybe worth maybe it. Bing Crosby will sell you going my way, and you, can, <laughs> yeah, you know, just as a yeah, sequel to yeah, this thing. Carried away, it should have been. No, it's a fantastic film. It's, and, and as you said, there's a Rocky in all of us, and it comes out, I, uh, what, have you have you been able yet to show the film to have boxers seen it? Oh yes. Oh, what yes. do they say? Well, Angelo Dundee saw it and said, "When I quit, he'd like to handle it." <laughs> <laughs> so I said, "No, no, it's fakeo, fakeo." <laughs> and I heard that Ali saw it and liked it very much. Kenny Norton saw it; he he enjoyed it, yeah. and uh, it's it's been very well received because it's 
the training procedure has never really been depicted before on film. And, uh, the actual running and the, the pain and the push-ups and all that, every, everything was glamorous. This is not so glamorous at times. No, it's not at all. But, but then again, it, it's back and forth. I, I definitely, when I wrote it, I went back and forth across the line of reality, and that, that was intentional. I wanted to uh, paint a picture as the way I wish it was rather than mm -hmm. the way it is. I wanted to ha incorporate a little bit of magic in the movie, and that's what I think the audience is responding to. Well, I got a bunch of other questions for you about it because uh, it, it, it is, it's an absorbing film, and it just, and I think it's probably going to be one of the biggest pictures of its time as far as, you know, oh. a boxing film. Listen, we've, we've got a film of, what, about two minutes, two and a mm -hmm. half minutes, and this is uh, just an encapsulation of some of the events or activities in the film. Okay. We'll give you an idea of what Rocky's like, and then you got to watch the other, what would be left, 100, uh, 98 minutes. Yes, another two hours. Two hours. Cut. Okay, that's segment one. That's segment one. Okay. okay. And slate, please. Stallone, scene two, take two, marker. And action. Well, you saw a little bit of Rocky. Not a lot, but I hope enough to get you into the movie theater and uh, find out a how beautiful a film can be. It, when I watched it, you got me tired just from the, uh, as, you, as you mentioned earlier, the, the training aspect of a mm -hmm. fighter. And have, you've stayed in pretty good shape then. You've well, yeah, I have to say that I wouldn't have gotten uh, anywhere near this position if it hadn't been for uh, physical fitness training all the time. It's, it's something that uh, I've done since I was about 13 years old. There's a line in the movie that uh, Rocky says, well, my father told me I wasn't born with much of a brain, so I better develop my body. Well, that kind of happened to me at around 13, so I took it to heart. And I wasn't in, it wasn't until I was 27 years old that I realized I did have a brain. I said it was just a hollow drum up there. <laughs> and uh, so in the meantime, I just lifted weights. And, but it, it paid off, and it's become a habit. And I've, I've learned discipline from that. And from that discipline, I, I think that's what got me through the writing and all that, that every day, that mundane chore is very boring, very lonely. Was the writing hard? Well. Um, it's the rewriting that is hard to me. The, uh, the initial writing is all right, but it's the rewrite when everyone wants to put in their, their ideas that you tend to get confused. It's like having seven or eight coaches on a football team. You can imagine that, like four plays going exactly. off in different directions. So that, that was a little difficult, but that's uh, the price you pay. I'm curious about something. As a writer, you, you have, there it is, sitting right there. Right. And you pick it up and you take it around and you know, I, I'm guessing how would you, you try to interest somebody in that in that property? Now you're now you're Rocky in the film and you're the screenwriter. Uh, did you find yourself being defensive about things? Were you were you quick to change? Were you quick to take advice on maybe a correction here, a correction there? Or how personal is that piece of property to you? How personal? Well, it's it's the ideas are are very very flexible. I I have. I take advice from criticism from anybody. A bus driver will come over and say, I don't like the way that's been, and I'll listen to it because I think that it's very valid and you have to be flexible because you can only put so much of your brain into a script and after that you become what is known as written out. You can't, uh, yeah, you, right. you've given this your best and now you need some outside input. So I was very, very open to, uh, to anyone's suggestion. For Burt Young and Talia Shire and Burgess Meredith, I saw their, their speech patterns, the way they move. So I would write the character and the dialogue to suit them. For example, Burt uh, Young, uh, the way he speaks, he juxtapositions. He'll say, instead of saying, uh, I want you to come over to my house tonight, he'll say, over my house tonight, I want you to come. Yeah. So, so I had to rearrange sentences to go along with that. So instead of him coming to me, I wanted to go to him. And I think that is uh, somewhat reflected in their characterization. Now, what, ab what about Rocky's voice? How did you develop? How did you? Rocky? Develop Rocky. Well, you just take about six or seven pounds of garbage and you <laughs> stick it right down your throat and <laughs> shove it down with a stick. Now, uh, it, it's, it's a very flat delivery and uh, it's, it's, I'm trying to think of what a husky, a husky 14 year old boy with adenoids would sound like. And that's, that's <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, seriously. Sure. And that's sure. what I went. Very flat, unembellished, un unembellished without uh, any highs and lows. That flat, like, he, uh, no, you want to come over my house or what? It's perfect. It's flat. But that at the type. same time, even as flat as it was, uh, the emotion was there. For instance, when uh, when Rocky finally uh, walks over to the bed 
and uh, tells Talia that uh, he can't do it. Right. He can't do it. And, and again, you know, the statement's flat, but the, the excitement uh, is in it, the, you know, the emotional charge. Well, yeah, that, that was a very important thing for me, too. Uh, I've always felt that uh, uh, if you give your best to something, and even if you don't win, but you know you've given the best, and unfortunately you just don't have the equipment to overpower your foe, you have nothing to be ashamed of. Rocky, when he went to the arena and realized he can't win, There's, he can't win. Why is he kidding himself? Uh, I thought it was very sad because I would interview uh, many, many fighters, and it seems like a fighter has never lost. A man can have a record of one win and 400 losses, but he's never lost. That's right. It was the weather, he had a toothache, <laughs> his hair was messed up, the yeah, yeah. uh, sun got in his eyes. Every excuse. You met a lot of golfers in your day. Right, yeah. right. Every, I say, admit it, you lost, and then you can start rebuilding. As long as you live this illusion, this, this false reality, that's when it becomes crippling, and, and you, eat it, you eat inside, you become crazy. So Rocky, that night, goes, he looks over the situation, and he comes back to his girlfriend and says, I can't win, but I don't care. If I can stand up, that's good enough. That's right. And that, to me, is, is very important. I feel that anyone, whatever their whatever the cho chosen profession, if they can at least have the opportunity to try. If they fail, all right, but at least give them the opportunity. That's all. When, or, or did you at all, realize in the production of that movie that it was going to be good, um, that it was going to be special? Well, truthfully, when I walked out of the trailer, it was about uh, four degrees in the Philadelphia. It was, it, I was the first scene was a running scene, and I wasn't sure about the director how much he was going to be involved in this. And I walked out, and there I saw him laying in the gutter with a camera, and with the wind and the rats and everything <laughs> blowing over him. I knew that we had total dedication. I knew I could hold up my part. And now I knew he could hold up his, and I, I thought we were going to, and I knew then we were going to be all right. Yeah, because some of the scenes are are, are so dynamic. The uh, the scenes with Burgess Meredith and. Uh, and then, of course, the other side of Rocky, the tender side, the right. side with uh, Talia, the girlfriend. And uh, uh, now, now, Bert was the brother, the brother of, uh, right. of Talia in the movie. Mm -hmm. Hi, now, when you were messing with the sides of beef, see, I got all these guys, I'm just so curious about these things, <laughs> because there seemed to be some scenes in that film where you couldn't look at your partner and say, oh, somebody else is doing it, when you were right. doing those crazy one-arm push-ups. And, uh, and and some of the running scenes, you know, I just knew as a runner, this guy really runs. Mm. Uh, what about the the side of the beef? Were you actually hitting that stuff? Oh yeah. Uh, again, when you're doing a film that pull it, well, no, no, that I couldn't pull. So they would tape my hands until they were like cement. Uh -huh. But after about 14 hours, uh, the cold gets into the joints, and when they un when they cut the taping off, my hands sprung out like five bananas connected with styrofoam. <laughs> and we're just like, wow, right? <laughs> now what do I do with these? I can't get them in my pockets. I don't know what to do with them. Uh, but the beef represented, I, I feel like, he was going to the body. That was his whole battle plan, to go to the ribs. And I thought, what an imagery. Here is his hanging beef practicing on the ribs. Wow. Mm -hmm. So when, it, when the fight does occur, we have a direct visual reference point, And then we can string it together and have much more impact. Yeah. Everybody's going to say uh, that, uh, I, and everybody is, that there's a possibility that uh, there, there could be an Oscar nomination uh, awards for Rocky. Does that uh, get into your thoughts at all? No, no. Uh, if it happens, and I would uh, like it very much to happen, of course, I'd like to win. I'd be, uh, I think, kind of a fool if I didn't. Uh, but I don't think that that's going to happen. It would be an amazing end to an odyssey if it did. I just, but I just don't think. I, I, I don't think that. Uh, people can readily accept that much of a change, that much of a, a out of nowhere, who is this person, and then all of a sudden to bestow a award on them. I think it kind of frightens people at times. They say, yeah. what is this? How come we didn't figure this out? Nobody figured it out. It just happened. It was luck. <laughs> you know, honest, guys, there was no plan. It was just blind luck. Listen, we've got a few minutes left when we get back, and I'd be, like to find out just a little bit about you. Sure. We, we know about Rocky, so we'll be back right after this word with Sly Stallone. <laughs> um, 